most PCB designers jump right into designing the schematic circuit diagram and the PCB layout itself, but there is a critical step that really needs to be completed first. That first step is to create what I call a preliminary production design. And this is not to be confused with the proof of concept prototype. A preliminary production design focuses on your product's production design, including the components, the cost, profit margin, performance features, development feasibility, and manufacturability. The advantage of starting with a preliminary production design is you can use it to estimate the various costs for your product before you begin full development. It's important to accurately know the cost ahead of time to develop, prototype, program, certify, scale, and manufacture your product. A preliminary production design needs to answer some really important questions such as, is my product feasible to manufacture? Can I afford to develop the, the production version? How long will it take me to develop the production version of my product? And can I mass manufacture the product? And most importantly, you need to know if you can sell your product at a profit. To know that, you need two numbers. You need to know the estimated manufacturing unit cost and then you need to know your, your retail sales price. A lot of people make the mistake of skipping this preliminary production design step and they just want to jump right into full development. But you don't want to spend lots of effort and all this money on a product if it can't be realistically developed, manufactured, and most importantly, if it can't be sold at a profit. When creating the preliminary production design, start by de defining the system level block diagram. This diagram specifies each electronic function and how all of the functional components interconnect. Now it's time to select the various production components that you need, such as the specific microchips, sensors, displays, connectors, and so on. By selecting these now, this will allow you to then create a preliminary bill of materials, or just BOM for short, sometimes just called a BOM. Once you have the preliminary production design completed, then you are ready to estimate the production cost, or also called the cost of goods sold, or COGS for short. So you're ready to estimate that cost for your product. If you end up building a proof of concept prototype for your product, then I'd suggest doing this production cost estimate after you finished your proof of concept prototype. But the sooner the better that you can do this estimation, it, the better in most cases. Okay, now it's time to design the schematic circuit diagram based on the system block diagram that you created in the first step. The schematic diagram shows how every component from microchips to resistors all connect together. Whereas a system block diagram is mostly focused on the higher level product functionality, a schematic diagram is all about the little details. Something as simple as a misnumbered pin on a component in a schematic can cause a complete lack of functionality. In most cases, you'll need a separate sub-circuit for each block of your system block diagram. These various sub-circuits will then be connected together to form the full schematic circuit diagram. Special electronics design software is used to create the schematic diagram and to help ensure it's free of any mistakes. My two favorite choices for PCB design software are DipTrace and KiCad. Other popular PCB software design packages include Altium Designer and Eagle, but these are pretty expensive and are best for anyone designing multiple products. Once the schematic is done, now you need to design the printed circuit board layout. The PCB, or Print Circuit Board Layout, is the physical board that holds and connects all of the electronic components. While the system block diagram and the schematic circuit are mostly conceptual in nature, a PCB design is very real world. The PCB will be designed in the same software that created the schematic diagram, and the software will have various verification tools to help you ensure that the PCB layout meets the design rules for the PCB process that you'll be using 
and that the PCB layout matches the schematic circuit diagram. In general, the smaller the product and the tighter the components are packed together, the longer it will take to create the PCB layout. If your product routes large amounts of power or offers wireless connectivity, then PCB layout is even more critical and time consuming. For most PCB designs, the most critical parts are the power routing, any high speed signals, these could be uh, crystals, clocks, or address data lines in a microprocessor, for example, and then any wireless circuits that have RF signals. Although you should have already created a preliminary BOM or bill of materials as part of the preliminary production design that we talked about in the first step, it's now time for the full production BOM. The main difference between the two is the numerous low-cost components like resistors and capacitors. These components usually only cost pennies or fractions of a penny, so I don't list them out separately in the preliminary BOM. But to actually manufacture the print circuit board, you need a complete BOM with every single component listed regardless of the price. The BOM list the part numbers, the quantities, and all of the component specifications. And this BOM is usually created automatically by the PCB design software that we use to create both the schematic and the PCB layout. Next, it's time to order your printed circuit board prototypes. And creating electronic prototypes or printed circuit boards is a two-step process. The first step produces the bare printed circuit boards. Your circuit design software will allow you to output the PCB layout in a format called Gerber, just like the, the baby food, Gerber files, and you'll have one file for each printed circuit board layer. These Gerber files can be sent to a prototype shop or a mass manufacturer for manufacturing your boards. The second step is also is having all of the electronic components soldered onto the board. From your design, your design software, you'll be able to output a file that shows the exact coordinates of every component placed on the board. This allows the assembly shop to fully automate the soldering of every component on your PCB. Your cheapest option is to produce your printed circuit board prototypes in China Although it's usually faster if you can do your prototyping closer to home to reduce shipping delays. And in, but in most cases, I suggest having your boards manufactured in China since it will drastically reduce your cost. Once you get your boards, now it's time to evaluate them. Keep in mind that your first prototype will rarely work perfectly. You'll most likely need to go through several iterations before you can finalize the design. And this is when you'll identify, debug, and fix any issues discovered with your prototype. This can be a really difficult stage to forecast in terms of both cost and time. Any bugs that you find in your design are, of course, by nature, not expected. So it takes time to figure out the source of the problem and how best to fix it. Evaluation and testing are usually done in parallel while programming the microcontroller using a development board. But before you begin programming though your custom board, you'll want to do at least some basic testing to ensure that the board doesn't have any major issues. 